Hey, today we're going to talk about health. So pay attention. This is an important show if you have any kind of injury. Uh, with me now is Scott Pensivi, who is a physical therapist that has a very unique way of, uh, of curing, perhaps. That may be a strong word. Yeah. And a little bit <laughs> later on in our show, uh, Dr. Toby Cosgrove, who is the CEO and chairman of the uh, uh, Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland and here at the Ruvo uh, uh, Brain Health Center. Uh, we'll be here to talk about some of the incredible things you're doing over at the Cleveland Clinic that you really need to learn about. Um, Scott, you have a very unique uh, technique, right? And it's called uh, PRRT. Correct. Which stands for what? It's called Primal Release uh, Reflex Technique. Okay, now can we put that into English? Sure. It, yeah. It's going after the, um, the pr primitive reflexes to downregulate pain. And that can be, you know, emotional pain or physical pain is what we're finding. So is this a, a manipulation of a sort or is it a machine or how does it it's work? A, it's a manipulation of the central nervous system using um, your hands and specific portions and parts of your body that, that store this pain uh, from, a, from a, some type of um, pain, whether it's emotional or physical. And how is this different from uh, a traditional chiropractic care? What's different is we, we don't do any manipulations of the, of the spine. We're, we're actually just doing a, a manipulation of the central nervous system by touching p certain points in, in your face, your body, and, and doing st like a stretch release to that nerve um, to decrease the pain. So if, is, 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 for instance, if you have a pain in your shoulder, Mm -hmm. Is that you go into the shoulder area or you go into a different area to Probably, relieve the pain? Right, we can go to a different area mm -hmm. to influence the pain in, in your shoulder. But it's really used for people that have chronic uh, pain uh, the best. People that have pain that is um, severe enough that they're eight or nine and they've never been without pain. And that what this does is it down regulates the pain so then you, your treatment can further uh, benefit them. And is it a temporary um, f relief? Sometimes it's temporary and sometimes it can last a lot longer. What, what it, I use it for the best is it relaxes the body enough so I can be more proficient at my other techniques that I do in, in, in my treatments of the patient. So it's not just the only answer, it's part of the, the, like the toolbox that we use to decrease the pain. And this is a technique that, that you u utilize with a lot of athletes and, and those kind of injuries as well? Correct. What we found is that when a, an athlete gets injured, they have what's called a startle reflex. And you know, it's a blow out a knee. Um, we have a, an NBA player that blew his knee out, um, got about 80, 85% better, and we couldn't get him that last little bit. So then I did the PRT on him, and that downregulated his sympathetic nervous system so he wasn't so apprehensive of that injury, and he got better and better and better. Again, you store that, that, that memory of that injury. So a lot of this is uh, emotional or mental. I mean, everything's kind of connected Correct. to what you're saying, right? Yeah, so you, you know, your physical body is definitely connected to your emotional body. So when you get an injury, uh, you're subconsciously uh, concerned. You, I mean, I guess your body sends your brain signals, hey, don't you know, put your weight on that side of your body or on that leg, that Correct. type of thing. Correct, Correct. yeah, it's a yeah. reflex. You know, the mm -hmm. body doesn't know, and it's, it thinks it's helping you out, but in the long term, it becomes chronic and it becomes a pattern. And what we do is we try to break that pattern. And so once you break that pattern, then they start putting more weight on it, and the body says, oh, I'm supposed to do this. Right. So and by not putting weight on it, correct me if I'm wrong, then you're also creating other structural problems Very good. within your body, right? Correct. Very yeah. good, yeah. So you can, uh, it's called the close kinetic chain reaction. So you can start having other areas to injure. Sure. So let me ask you about some typical injuries, okay? Uh, for instance, uh, runners. Mm -hmm. You know, they always, uh, sooner or later, if you're a, a runner, you're going to get hurt, right? Sure. You're going to hurt your typically your knees sure. or your hips, right? Mm -hmm. So um, how do you um, utilize this technique with a runner um, who, you know, is, they have to stop running or can they continue running while they're going through treatment? Well, most athletes mm -hmm. aren't going to stop what they do. And so when you get injured, if it's a, a, an injury that happened, they stepped off the curb, that's a, that's a traumatic injury. We know what happened, they stepped off the curb. But if, let's say, somebody's running over a period of time and they, and they have pain, you got to find out what the cause is, not just treat the symptoms. So we got to look at, let's say they come in and they have knee pain. Mm -hmm. You got to look at the hips, you have to look at the feet and see what caused, what caused that knee pain. Not just treat, you know, you got to treat the cause, not just the symptoms. And so um, what we try to do is try to identify the cause 
treat the cause, and that helps with the symptoms. And what, what if it's a tip, you know, it's a, a strain or a sprain, it's something mm -hmm. that's not permanent in nature? Yeah, if something's not permanent, then, then that, again, there's a different way that we, we treat that. Um, again, if, if they sprain their ankle, that, that starter reflex has been activated. So we want to first downregulate that. That's the very first thing that we do, the first treatment. Then after that, we do um, other treatments like um, we do a technique called MARS, we do um, cupping, we do soft tissue, um, we will do the, the, the rehab uh, 1000. Um, we'll do all those techniques to help decrease that pain and get them back to the function. Are the old uh, rules still effective if you have a strain or a sprain, you ice it first, you elevate it, uh, mm -hmm. you rest it, is that still uh, you relevant? Know, you, you know, there, there are, the last study that I just read that they're saying we're icing more than we should be, um, that basically the first 72 hours were ice and rest, that's right, it's a, called right. the rice principle, and you know, it's a rest, ice, compression, elevation, mm -hmm. and that is still the, the case, um, but I think what happens is we start it if we do too much ice, we're, we're actually stopping the healing and letting the body heal itself. And so we have to really get get the body to start healing itself, let it start to have circulation. That's why that's how things heal. And again, that's the reason why we came up with the, the Rehab 1000 and the, and the scraping technique is it helps the hypotic area to become less inflamed, helps lymphatic drainage, helps increase blood flow to that area. So mm -hmm. there is a period of time that you want to rest that area but then there's a period of time that you must uh, you know, force some type of activity on that to heal it. Yeah, yeah. That's why uh, hospitals today when you're walking as soon as possible That's after, correct. after surgery, right? It used to be the old school, it used to be, hey, stay in bed and, and heal. Yes. But you mentioned this um, Rehab 1000. What exactly, is this a cream? Yes, this is a topical cream. Um, we first um, developed it over in uh, Asia and over in Korea in Seoul. That's where we first started selling uh -huh. it. And then um, we have it now in the United States that people can purchase it here in the United States um, as of about a couple months ago. But we've been using it on our patients for about 10 years, on and off, using a lot of our pro athletes. Um, we first designed it to go after people that had fibromyalgia, actually. People, I wanted to have the, the toughest patients that didn't get better, fibromyalgia patients in chronic pain or diabetic neuropathy. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to find a way to decrease their pain. And one of the um, best topical creams is a capsaicin base. Capacin is a, a pepper, and what happens, it goes in and eats up your peptides. Those are um, receptors that are giving off a substance of giving you pain. So if we had something to decrease that, so then we came up with the capsin. Then we added tromaline, which is an anti-inflammatory, and an MSM, which helps drive the, uh, the capsin in a little bit deeper. We've done some cadaver dissections where we have 6.2 millimeters of penetration, farther than a hot pack with this type of uh, a technique. Yeah, because typically, I mean, I mean people would use uh, a cortisone or something like that to, to stop the inflammation. Mm -hmm. And is, does that work differently? Yeah, it's a little di different. Uh, cortisone is a, goes after different receptors. This is actually going after your pain receptors. Um, and so that's why there's, there's other topical products that, that you know of um, that um, are more of a counter irritant. So you feel the, the heat or you feel the cold, so you don't feel the pain. This, not only do you do that, but it actually still goes after the, the pain that causes the pain. So it's actually doing two things. Do you, you and, and this is, you, I mean, you really can't apply it yourself without knowing how and where, is that correct? No, or, no, you, you, you can, you, you, can um, you can use this just like a, your Bengay, we call it, your, uh -huh. your, it's better than your grandpa's Bengay. Yeah. But yeah, you can do that. The problem with this, when we first came up with it, was people would put it on their hands, and right. then they would touch your eye and, and it would burn. So right. then what happens, we came up with these, these tools, and these tools, um, these are two, this is a 2,000 year old technique. It's called right. Gua Sha or Tune. Over in, in Asia, they would scrape uh, the area. So what we do now is you put the cream on by using the scraping. The scraping techniques helps it penetrate further, helps increase the circulation, helps with, uh, again, lymphatic drainage, helps mast cell production, so it helps the healing process. So it does kind of two things. Do you, do you still u uh, utilize something like this in conjunction with uh, um, anti Motrin and anti sure. anti-inflammatories? Sure. Yeah. You, you can. Yeah. Um, the problem with, again, uh, when you take things orally, there's those side effects. You know that, that you have to be careful of. There, you know, there are a lot of people that liver, have problems, yeah. liver, kidneys, and so this is a technique that isn't going to do that. It's not going to damage the uh -huh. internal organs. Um, so it's a lot less. Um, it's going right after the area. It's not doing a whole systemic. Uh, so that's why another reason why my athletes like it is because it's it goes right after the spot. It's not internal. It's more natural. Um, so that's why they use it. Now, I know in your in your office you have uh, you know a wall of photographs and thank mm -hmm. you letters from uh, from different professional athletes. Mm -hmm. um, you have a story you can tell about any of them? Oh, well, the, the probably the biggest one right now is uh, Troy Tulowitzki. Um, you know he 
uh, he actually bought a house here two years ago to train with us two years ago. And um, he always had a hip problem. Couldn't get through it. In 2008, he started having hip problems. And he's, he's a baseball, uh, baseball player. player for the um, Rockies, shortstop. Right, and, and when you... Uh and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. when you're uh, when you're batting, right. what you're really using is your hip strength. That's correct. Right? Mm -hmm. Because that's it's not the power is less in your upper body and right. more in the swing and the pelvis, hip. Right. right, pelvis and hips. Mm -hmm. And so we we saw him two years ago. He, he trained with us for a, a whole summer, and when last year he played and he played well. Um, I think he hit like almost 300. And then this year we, he came and um, actually bought a house here so he could train in our facility for three months. And now I just got back from uh, L.A. And uh, I treated him there, and he's hitting over 400. And there's a photograph of your facility there. Yes. Yeah, the, so, um, so in addition to, you know, um, using the Rehab 1000, you're going to do, you know, f traditional physical therapy at the same time. Yes, correct. Right. Um, and, and how many of, how often do you include uh, medication or surgery in these type of treatments? Um, very rarely, we, we're finding that, let's say, lower back injuries, mm -hmm. you know, one out of 100 needs surgery. All the rest can usually be maintained or corrected with, the, you know, conservative treatments. Um, we see post-op patients all the time, like, uh, let's say somebody has a ACL tear, we'll see them, we'll see a meniscus, we'll see surgery in the neck, we'll see a rotator cuff repair. Right. But a lot of the patients that we see um, at my clinic are people that come in and they've been everywhere. They no one can figure out what's wrong with them. And we and we you know sit down with them, spend about an hour in an initial evaluation, and we try to find out what the cause and, and, and try to help. So it's a little bit different than than some of the other uh, clinics in town. Now, as we age, everybody is going to experience pain, right? Correct. I mean, you, you get older, you get tired, you get mm -hmm. hurt, right? And if you're a professional athlete, eventually um, you're going to have pain from from that activity, Correct. right? I mean, every swimmer, every um, pitcher has uh, at least some rotator problems, right? Over, overhead Elbow, movements shoulders, or elbows. Correct. Yeah. So um, when do you know when you should treat something and when and when you should just give it some time and let it go away? That's, that's a good question. I think if something lasts more than 48 hours, it's keeping you up at night, can't get a good sleep, um, and it's affecting your, your lifestyle, that's when you, you need to get attention. Um, and sometimes, even if you just got a, a little soreness that starts to get worse over a period of time, you need to get it checked out. And how long should somebody continue to undergo physical therapy? I mean, I think a lot of people are afraid, well, if I start this, it's, I'm going to mm -hmm. be going to a physical therapist, you know, twice a week for the right. next uh, three years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our philosophy at sports is um, if you're not getting better in two to three visits, uh, then we're not doing the, the right job. We need to send you somewhere else or we're not going to be able to help you. Our average is about six to nine visits and, um, and then we have what's called a post-discharge program. We have a gym, about a 4,000 square foot gym next to us and then we have a Pilates system, uh, uh, about 3,500 3, square foot. And what we try to do is get people to, to join the gym or Pilates or f join a gym somewhere else to maintain that active, healthy living style. Yeah, our job is not to um, is to keep the person uh, dependent on us. Our, our job is to get them independent and take care of themselves. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because when I, when I go to the gym and see some, you know, people training and working out, um, oftentimes I see them doing it improperly. Correct. I mean, as little as I know about it, but you know, it's it's not how how much you jerk or right, right. using the wrong body muscles right. uh, to, to in a machine. And, and uh, so a lot of I guess what you're doing at your gym is uh, or your uh, is teaching people how to uh, pr properly trained? Yes, correct. Yeah. We, we, what we do is we do an evaluation on them. Um, if they just want to join the gym, because it, it's open to the public too, mm -hmm. we do an evaluation or screening to show, show them what is the correct way to lift and what's the incorrect. And as we get older, our, the biggest thing that, that we need to do is, is stretch more and, and st strengthen, but strengthen in a, in a uh, range that's a, appropriate. Like you say, you go to the gym and you mm -hmm. see these guys lifting these big, heavy uh, weights, poor right. po posture, yeah. and they're, it's going to end up c catching up to them. Yeah, I mean, it used to be um, the conventional wisdom was they wanted you to stretch a lot before you did an exercise. Now I'm hearing that, no, just, just we'll kind of warm up and then do all your stretching right. after. Yeah, and that's changed. You know, I've been out 26 years, and the first, when I got out of school, it was, you know, stretch, exercise, right. you know, and that was done. Well, now we're finding that those static stretches actually uh, weaken the muscle and actually get, you can get injured. So what we do is we go do what's called a dynamic stretching. It's a close kinetic chain stretching that we have our athletes do. Uh, it just takes five, ten minutes. You go through the stretching program and then you do your activity. And then after the activity, you stretch again, you more stretch. static. 
So right. it's kind of interesting how that's changed. But there are been there's been studies that show people get injured more before uh, before uh, an activity of stretching statically. So when you see these kids, you know, getting their friends stretching their hamstrings and uh -huh. holding it, and it's not a good idea. Hey, thank you very much, Scott Pensivi. Um, and we have a, up on the screen where you can reach them if, if you more, want more information about, uh, and this is not a, an infomercial, but this Rehab 1000 is kind of a new novel thing and it yeah. seems to work really well. Yes. So thank you very much, Scott. We'll be right back with Dr. Toby Cosgrove from the Cleveland Clinic. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks. it.